Hello and welcome to the Advanced Qualtrics training demonstration. Today we're going to go over survey logic, how to create conditions for experimental manipulation, how to randomize participants to conditions, and pipe text. For the advanced demo, we're building off of the survey we started in the beginner demonstration video. We're going to talk about how to randomize participants to conditions a little bit later on, so before we begin, we're going to create our experimental stimuli. In order to organize and manipulate which stimuli your participant sees, it is best to have each group of experimental stimuli in their own block. For this experiment, the stimuli is going to be photos of job applicants. The first block will contain these two pictures of hypothetical applicants named John and Jane. And this block will be called Condition 1. The second block will also contain John and Jane, but using different pictures and this block will be called condition 2. You may have noticed we only have one picture in condition 2 right now and that's because we're going to show you guys really quick how to upload visual stimuli to your survey. In the condition 2 block after the first photo of John click the create a new question caret and then go up to graphic text and click the caret then select graphic width text and then uh, click on select a graphic to use for this question. The screen will give you a couple of upload options. You can either upload from your Qualtrics library or directly from a file on your computer. Once you have selected your library type, you can click upload a new graphic and then select choose file. We're going to select our picture from our desktop. Um, and uh, You can edit the size of the photo here for a better fit on the survey screen. You can also add a description of the text. Uh, ours looks good so we're going to hit save. And for this picture we're going to give information about the applicant in the text box but it, there's nothing in there right now so um, we're going to scroll back up to our first Jane and copy this information. Not cut by accident. We're going to copy it and then paste this here. So once this is done, our experimental conditions are now created. And so now we're going to transition into uh, survey logic. So in the next three blocks, we have already written out some questions for the survey participants. Since we're going to be applying survey logic to one of these sets of questions, each set of questions needs to be in their own block. Doing this will help us apply the logic to the questions and this practice generally helps to organize your survey information. Also notice that we've labeled each block with a title that's relevant for the study. Uh, hiring 1, Hiring 2, and Hiring 3. Before addressing branch logic, we will show you guys how to perform skip logic and display logic. So we'll start with uh, adding skip logic and we're going to add this to the consent form. So we're going to scroll to the top. So we're going to do this so that participants who do not consent to the conditions of the study will be sent to the end of the survey. Skip logic is useful if participants need to respond in a particular way in order to see a question or, like in this case, complete the survey. Keep in mind that skip logic only allows you to jump to questions within your current question block. So in other words, you can't use skip logic to skip to a question in another block. So it's best to type out all questions linearly before applying skip logic. So here we have typed out our initial consent form and our response options can be located below this. And so we want to select the initial question. We want to apply the skip logic to the question we want to skip from. So on the left side of the screen you will notice a icon that resembles a settings wheel. You'll click this and uh, some options will be displayed and you'll want to select add skip logic. You may have to scroll to the bottom of the block to see the skip logic appear. And you'll notice it says condition. Uh, the first option highlighted is yes I consent which is what we want. So if the participant selects yes I consent the second box should say is selected. This indicates to Qualtrics to then skip to the desired point in the survey. In this case it will be the end of the consent block leading them to the start of the survey, so we will select end of block. So the skip logic should read, if yes I consent is selected, then skip to the end of the block. 
Once this is complete, we will press Done. And you'll notice that the skip logic will stay visible on the question, which is a nifty feature. To add logic for if the participant selects No, we'll go back to the initial question, select the Settings wheel again, and then select Add Skip Logic. Here the condition should say, um, if No is selected, so click that, uh, skip to end of survey. And so we'll press Done. And now we have completed our skip logic portion. So next we will show you how to perform display logic. This kind of logic enables us to display a question to participants if they meet a certain condition or requirement, in this case, having hired someone before. So to do this, we'll scroll to the questions in our very last block. So we only want the question, what recruiting tool do you prefer when hiring employees to show if the participant has hired someone before? So we will add display logic to the question we want to be displayed. In this case, it's condition, uh, question six for us. So we'll find the settings wheel on the left-hand side of this question, and we'll select this, and then select add display logic. As you can see, the logic reads, display this question only if the following condition is met. So for us, the condition is that employees have hired someone before. So we will select this question, uh, which is question five for us. And we will select the response, response option, yes. Okay, so now we can press save and you'll see that the display logic is visible in the survey. So our logic is that this question, what recruiting tool do you prefer when hiring someone, only displays if the participant selects yes on the question that asks them if they have hired an employee before. All right, so now we're going to discuss uh, our last type of logic, which is branch logic. Unlike skip logic, branch logic enables you to jump to another block or control which blocks are displayed for a particular condition. So it's helpful for more complex survey flow. We're going to use branching to show you guys how to assign participants to conditions so they will only see certain visual stimuli, in this case, John and Jane, but either as a black male and white female or as a white male and black female. To do this, we'll scroll to the very top of the screen and select Survey Flow. We're going to click Add Below on our first block, the Consent block, and then we will select the Randomizer option. This allows us to randomly assign participants to conditions. We will then click the Add a new element here in order to create the conditions. Uh, next we will click embedded data and type in uh, condition and then we will set the value equal to 1 for condition 1. After that we will do the same thing for condition 2 and make sure that you select add a new element here and not the add a new field option. Um, so this ensures that your data is clean and easy to read when you export it from Qualtrics. So we'll select embedded data again. Um, we'll type condition. And then we'll set the value to 2 for our second condition. So look back up in the purple field now and uh, see that it says randomly present two of the following elements. This status means that Currently, participants will be in both conditions, as we only have two, um, but this is not what we want if we only want participants to be exposed to one set of the visual stimuli. So select the uh, minus option to decrease the number to one, so now it will randomly present only one of the conditions we created. Next to the statement is an optional checkbox, which gives you the option to evenly present elements or conditions. We will select this box because this ensures that half of our subject pool will be randomly assigned to condition 1 and the other half will be randomly assigned to condition 2. So now we're going to go ahead and move the randomizer box to the very top of the survey because this allows the participant to be placed in the condition from the very start of the survey. And this makes interpreting your data and interpreting which condition each participant is in easier when you're reading the exported data file. So to do this, Place your cursor over the word move on the purple randomizer box 
and the cursor will indicate that you can drag the box. So we'll drag it to above the very first block, which is our consent block. All right, so now that we've set up our conditions, we can link participants in condition one and two to the corresponding visual stimuli, which is John and Jane. We're going to do this using branch logic. On the big five inventory block, click add below, um, and then click branch. This created a branch stem, which we will use to link condition one participants to condition one stimuli. Next, click add a condition, and it will say then branch if and so we will use the first drop down menu to select embedded data and you will type condition then is equal to one for our first condition and then we will press OK so currently this branch reads if the embedded data is equal to condition one so next on our condition one block we will place our cursor over the word move and we will uh, drag the condition one stimuli block to where it says add a new element under our new condition one branch. So now our branch logic shows that if the embedded data is equal to condition one, the condition one stimuli block will be displayed. So we'll repeat the same process for condition two. On the condition two block, select add below and then select branch. Next, we will click add a condition and use the first drop down menu to select embedded data. We'll type condition, then is equal to and type two for our second condition. So we'll press OK. Currently, this branch reads if the embedded data is equal to condition two. Um, so uh, next on our condition two block, we will place our cursor over the word move and we will drag the condition two stimuli block to where it says add a new element here under your new condition two branch. So again, to summarize, what we just did was to ensure that participants in condition one are shown the condition one stimuli, which are John and Jane as a black male and white female respectively, and to ensure partic participants in condition two are shown the condition two stimuli, which are John and Jane as a white male and black female. We used branching here because it is a quicker way to assign participants uh, to a condition. And so, uh, or a quicker way to assign groups to a condition. So now that we're done with our branches, we can select save flow at the bottom right. Okay, so finally, we are going to scroll down to our very, uh, to our second to last block, hiring two. And we're going to show you guys how to implement pipe text to question three. So pipe text is used to make the question more personalized and bring information that the participant has previously provided into a new question. In this case, uh, the name of the selected applicant that they chose uh, prior to this. So question four asks the participant to explain why they selected a particular applicant. Um, in this case, before question four, we want to remind the participant of which applicant they chose. So you can see that we have the stem of our question, which is you chose to hire, and we've omitted the part that will be piped in as there is a space and then a period. So we will select the descriptive text box and place the cursor where we want the piped text information to appear. So we'll leave the cursor in the desired location, then move the mouse to select the piped text option on the blue toolbar. And so we want to pipe the text from a survey question. Um, and then we will find the question where we want to get the information from. In this case, it's the question, which candidate would you recommend to hire, which is question two. And we will pick selected choices. Since we used a multiple choice question, this will insert the name of the applicant they selected. As you can see, Qualtrics will insert the proper code for this information. So if they select John, John will appear here, and the same goes for if they select Jane. So there you have it. We've completed our advanced survey. Um, as a reminder, we always recommend previewing the survey to make sure that your survey flows in the correct order before you finish it and all of the features are working. So to show you guys some of the features we've included, we'll walk you through a preview of our survey. 
Okay, so here's our consent form. You can scroll to the bottom and find our response options. And we'll, we'll click yes, I consent. So it should take us into the next block, our demographics block. It does, that's good. So we'll just fill this out for good measure. And it takes us next to our BFI measure. And then looks like we've been assigned to condition one, which is John as a black male and Jane as a white female. Um, so next, it uh, good, it doesn't display condition two stimuli. It takes us to our, um, our question, which candidate would you recommend to hire? So we're going to hire Jane. And you can see here that it, uh, it took the information we just selected. We selected Jane, and it piped it into um, this description at the top, which says you chose to hire Jane, which is good. So it's asking us to say why we hired Jane. Houston's pretty nice. So we'll move on. And so this is our question, have you ever hired an employee? And we'll say no, and it should take us to the end of the survey which it does, so that's great. Um, we strongly recommend that going, you go through the survey a couple more times just to make sure all of the features you included are in your survey operate properly. So thank you again for watching. If you haven't checked out our beginner video and need some tips on the basics, make sure to check it out.